Hey, Chris. And if you if you don't have it, if you want me to, if you want me to read it, I can read it. Oh, please do then. Okay. All right, it's seven o two. Um, I think we're good to go with with the Sustainability Advisory Committee meeting on seventh of July. Uh, Nico, please. Okay, Madam Chair, thank you, and on your behalf, I'm happy to. Um, invoke the provisions of RSA 91A colon 23B and announce that the meeting will be conducted without a quorum of the body physically present in the same location. Uh, again, all votes will be taken by roll call uh, during the meeting. Um, and Madam Chair, at any time, uh, if you'd like to start uh, introducing the roll call attendance and when each member states their name, if they would please state whether there's anyone in the room with them, and if so, please identify who they are. Madam Chair. Okay, um, I'll kick it off. Uh, I'm Chetna Palmer and I'm the chair for the committee and I'm in the room by myself. Uh, good evening, Christopher Zygmunt uh, and I am in the room by myself. Nina, do you want to go? Sure. Good evening. I'm Nina Braun and I'm in the room by myself. Bev? Bev Tappan, room by myself. Kristen, you're muted. <laughs> Sorry, just getting my mouse over. Kristen Osterwood and I, there's three other people in the room with me, children. <laughs> They'll probably come say hi. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. Madam Chair, I'm Nico Pacostadis, I'm the select board rep to the society budget. Nico, you froze. Oh. Yep. How about now? Better. You can hear me now? We have another yeah. Okay, I introduced myself and I, Nico Papakostin D, select board rep to the committee, and I'm alone in the room. Uh, Julie? Hi, uh, Julie LeBranch, Rockingham Planning Commission. And I'm here just with my dog. <laughs> okay, all right. So thank you everyone. And we had apologies from uh, Dave Sharples, who's obviously away for the week. So, um, so yeah, um, I think uh, approval of the minutes from the last meeting on 2nd of June. Uh, were there any comments, any amendments, changes? Anybody want to? No. Nope. Move to accept. Motion to accept. I'll second that. All right. Thank you for that. I um, don't think there were any action items. Um, I think we had uh, an update from uh, Dave with regards to the UNH fellow uh, about the data collection. I want to reiterate the situation there. So we said that Rachel has been collecting the data and um, is on schedule. Um, so he said that we do have a few uh, data points still to collect and uh, he will be assisting her uh, with that during the week. Um, and then he'll be attending her midterm presentation via Zoom next Friday, uh, and by which time she should have collected all the data by that time. So uh, we'll hopefully hear more about the situation uh, once that has happened as to the next stage with regards to uh, gas house emissions inventory for the municipal buildings. Do we have any updates on the communication, social media aspects of things? Anyone? Uh, 
<clears throat> I'll chime in there for just a, uh, a minute. Uh, I was having some uh, dialogue with, with Dave Sharples. Uh, he was uh, working on setting up a meeting um, to have us chat about uh, better utilization of the town Facebook page, of which there actually is a really strong uh, Facebook page with more than 5,000 followers for the town, uh, and working on a, a flow uh, of communication to get that done. Just given um, vacations and other timings, we weren't able to uh, see that meeting through uh, yet. Uh, but just to update the group that uh, we're in pursuit of that meeting and, uh, and just to explore uh, workflow options. So that's where we are today. Okay. All right. What kind of um, information is on the town Facebook page generally? Well, you know, it's great, actually, if you will permit me, Madam Chair, I'll take just a moment. If I, if I don't overtax the uh, household uh, Wi-Fi, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting that the mission statement of the town's uh, Facebook page is, is, is on there. And it's, it's, to paraphrase without looking at it, it's to inform the community of happenings and events and uh, things in the town. And it's, it doesn't, um, it seems to be uh, as well as it broadcasts on the Exeter TV stuff, there's an Exeter TV Facebook page, but there's also which has half the followers of the town of Exeter Facebook page. Uh, and it, I think it's, it's, a, it's a sort of a key communication principle to not uh, divide your audience too much and try to get them focused. So, uh, you know, one of the, the objectives of the meeting was to learn a little bit more about um, what the posting protocol was and who filters the information to get to the town Facebook page and, and how, uh, you know, this committee or any other committee or anybody else related to the town can put information forward to get that posted. Uh, so that's kind of where we are. Um, but it's, uh, you know, if you haven't liked it or followed it, I highly recommend you do. Uh, but in, in, in looking around in a quick canvas of uh, other similar sized towns, uh, in New Hampshire and other in other states, uh, you're going to find it's 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 often used as we as we do in our own lives as a really great information dissemination tool because it's uh, because it's fed. It's not you don't have to go seek it. It's in it's in people's feed. So, um, you know, I, I think it's the nice part is it's a disposal is a tool already at our disposal. We've already got a mechanism set up to run it. We don't have to you know, there's, there's not a lot of invention here. So, you know, I'm always one to see if we can use the tools or the toolbox first. So let's see if we can get that deployed. Okay. That's good to know. I think our task can be for checking out the town website, Facebook page before the next meeting. All right. So, um, I think our main, um, meeting today is to cover the update on the document that uh, Dave and Julie shared with us last week, last month. Um, and um, we submitted our comments and so on. So Julie, did you want to take it forward? You're muted. Yep, I know. <laughs> Just took me a while to get my mouse there. Um, yes, thank you, I will. Um, so Dave uh, collected the comments that, that people sent in. I think we got comes from almost all the members. Um, I mean, he, he sort of just compiled those into a, a streaming document, but not in any particular order. Um, so what I kind of did um, since then was I sort of went through and found where a common themes uh, and overlap of ideas occurred during in, in, in the comments that we did receive. I kind of wanted just to kind of go over the list of, of things that I, I had found. Um, so under, um, so we divided the, the needs assessment gap analysis is divided into different um, you know, categories. So it's planning, municipal operations and policy, community-based uh, community um, and outreach, so community-based actions and outreach, uh, regulatory and land use, uh, conservation and adaptation and resilience. So um, under municipal operations and policy, the two things that kind of floated to the top that uh, that several people mentioned wanting was a, after the greenhouse gas inventory was completed to actually um, evaluate the data, uh, the results of the data, and to come up with a, a reduction policy where reductions are feasible and where they're needed. Um, and then the other thing involved in municipal, municipal 
fiscal policy was a, a purchase policy. So and uh, coming up with a policy where energy efficiency and sustainability and um, resilience would all be considered when when um, purchasing anything, whether it's equipment or building a new building or um, construction or um, um, even just day-to-day -day maintenance sorts of sorts of situations where you know there are better products to probably buy than others so some sort of purchasing policy um, and that could be a quite an a, you know a wide-ranging policy that could encompass all the things I mentioned basically and probably a lot more than that um, and so just jump in if anyone you know wants to ask any questions or talk or expand upon any of these um, these um, <clears throat> broad ideas as I go through them um, the next category was um, regulatory and land use, and there was uh, definitely a, a, several people who mentioned um, going through and revising and looking at re reviewing and making recommendations to revise the town's building code. Um, I don't know, Chetna, do you know if the town has adopted the new state building code yet, officially? Okay, that's one that we want to question and ask. I'll probably ask that of um, Doug Eastman and ask it, you know, where they're at with that. The, ten, the state has adopted it, so everything has to conform to the minimum standards of the state. And I think it was the International Building Code of, it's not the most recent one, I think it's like 2015 or 2016 or something like that. It's 2015. Somewhere in that, that pardon? 2018, Kristen? 2015, it's 2015. 2015, that's what I thought. Was like the previous one but there's a, a you know a new iteration of it but at least at least we're, we've moved ourselves forward like you know a number of iterations so that's good as a state um the other I thing under i don't suppose there's anything in there now in the building uh the permit details or whatever requirements about clean energy um there is a it section seems to me that they could There's a new section in the in the state building code that does address that. I haven't actually read it, but um, according to the state building code, there is some clean energy and, and definitely energy efficiency standards in there. Um, so can we think about that for Exeter's permitting? Well, Exeter needs to actually, you know, they have to adhere to the minimum requirements there in this, the new the new adopted state code. But you can go. <clears throat> you can adopt stricter codes than that if you if you choose to. So um, yes, definitely something. That would to look have at. a tremendous impact. You know, I'm thinking now. Uh, Riverwoods has two large projects <clears throat> coming up, and it would be wonderful if uh, there were inducements to use clean energy in those projects. So, I don't know how Exeter uh, structures you know, their I'm, building code. Uh, yeah, very effective. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how Exeter structures their building codes, whether it's considered a, an ordinance and it needs to go to town meeting. So that could be a something to think about as far as the time frame for you know making any revisions or amendments um, that it might have to follow you know the town warrant article cycle. So I sorry I forgot to mention something before I started going through these. Um, is that I think. You know what day what I had envisioned moving forward with the with the with the committee is that is out of this discussion is to come up with a, a short a short ish list of priority um, action items and to maybe whittle it down to maybe five or fewer um, and to start to develop work plans around each one um, about like what needs to happen who do we need to talk to like like Beverly you mentioned the you know the building codes what 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 needs what's what what process uh, it, um, is involved to revise those. And so start to create sort of a mini work plan around each one of the, the items that the, that the committee feels like are, are, are priority items. So all these, I'm, I'm taking notes as we talk here. So I'm, uh, um, in the next iteration of this, I will um, include those notes and in, in the comments that you're making. And, and then I'll send these out to everyone and then we can, you know, by, maybe by email, get a few more, um, questions and maybe comments on each one of them um, to go a little bit further. Um, another one was under adaptation and resilience. There was definitely a theme going across several several sets of comments about um, 
doing planning, you know, re relative to res uh, resilience and sustainability together. Um, and that so some people mentioned things like the high watermark initiative, which was a coastal coastal New Hampshire effort to, to put signage mm -hmm. up to actually document high water mark, high, high flood mark um, in marks in each, each community on the, on the Atlantic coast. Um, and then other people mentioned, you know, flood maps and uh, the, the, um, the, the um, uh, NOAA um, uh, community um, rating system um, that we had done, uh, that Chris, Kristen Murphy had done an audit of their, of their program and created a spreadsheet. And there are lots of actions that could be taken that are recommended under that program. Even though the town's not officially in the program, if you implement things, it still, it still benefits the community. So, um, so those were some of the comments that were underneath that one. Um, one of the comments under community-based um, outreach, community-based actions and outreach was about um, holding some sustainability events, you know, annually, making sure that it that's something that that you do on a regular basis, that it gets, becomes part of your regular work plan or you know your goals for the for, for every year to to um, either sponsor or help work help organize or partner with others to organize sustainability events. Um, Another one under planning, general planning, was to develop a bike, uh, bicycle pedestrian plan for the town. And that one caught my eye. That's like right up our, our PC's alley. So our transportation uh, uh, tra uh, and um, bike pad guy, Scott Bogle, would love to get his teeth into doing a plan like that for Exeter. He, um, he may be able to offer you some assistance um, and some technical assistance um, through, uh, through our transportation program. So that's, that's definitely something I'll follow up on and, and find out what what RPC can, can offer you. Um, a lot of towns are, are, and cities are doing that. Forsmouth has one. Um, I'm not really sure who, Durham might have one. I'm not certain. Dover, I believe, is probably going to be working on one. Um, so not a bad thing to do. So other things that came up um, that um, were just kind of general comments, but that several people made general comments about that weren't necessarily, you know, maybe tied to one of the needs assessment gap analysis that we'll, we'll probably add to the list. These are really good things. Our flood resilience planning, which goes into that whole resilience and adaptation um, um, need, um, goal or task. Um, also composting was brought up. You know, Mr. Fox does service Exeter. Actually, they service the RPC and the RPC is a composter. Um, put our can out every two weeks and a lot, I actually, um, I'm always surprised to see how many uh, businesses along Water Street actually do compost. It's, there are quite a few out there every, every four, by four o'clock on every every uh, Monday Monday afternoon or every two weeks. Um, and then um, the other thing that came up was was to develop a communications plan. And Christopher, I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about that. What you know, what the community you have a subcommittee going now, and and whether you know, you know, I'm here to offer technical assistance and some some you know manpower hours to actually, you know, dig into a communications plan and um, and dig into some of the things that you feel like you'd like to, to work on. So um, I'm here to offer any kind of help that you need um, on that. And just one a side note, um, I think uh, there was a comment about um, the whole idea of branding and developing the logo. And I think there was some confusion as to what that meant. It really, it meant not a logo or branding for the for the committee, but a logo or branding for the project. So things like things that come out of the project will have a logo on them or some sort of graphic that kind of stamps them as part of the project. So it wasn't a, it wasn't directed towards the committee; it was directed towards the project and any anything that comes out of the project, such as fact sheets or um, you know a web page or any any printed materials or anything like that. So that's sort of a distillation, I think, of the things that, and it's, there's certainly way more comments in, in, that you, you can go through um, and comment on, but those were sort of the ones where I found commonality amongst amongst the, the different sets of comments. Um, and certainly I think that maybe, uh, I can type up these notes and send them to everybody, but if everyone wanted to go through the, that, the, um, the compiled version that Dave sent and maybe highlight Things that you think are super important that you know points that other people made, perhaps, um, and then I could add those to to the sort of the short the short condensed list of of things I just talked about. So that's kind of all I had for tonight. For tonight, I mean, I kind of wanted to get a feel for where 
you know, how, you, how you'd like to move forward with this, whether you want to do like another round of comments based on the compilation of comments and then kind of keep distilling them down into something where the, the committee may find consensus around, um, you know, a priority list of, of tasks. I think that um, we really should sort of look at uh, forming a subcommittee uh, so that we can dig into um, this document and um, and then hopefully narrow down with discussions with yourself and Dave on the top five that you want, you know that would work for immediate sort of goal setting and and then bring them back to the committee as a whole and and you know because i think to to use up the the meeting time um here you know we could just carry on going as we can see the, the document you know people have got varying uh you know things that they you know they they would really love to see and you know and 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 i think it's a it's a question of so sort of reviewing this document and then saying you know, narrowing it down on a smaller within a subcommittee, and then bringing it to the to the bigger um, committee at the meeting, and saying, okay, well, this is this is where we think that we can make the most impact and see the most impact in the immediate future, um, and um, and then keep a few sort of tasks or projects which are a lot more long term and. Um, would take a lot more effort and time to see through, especially if it's collaborating with different departments and different committees already, you know, that may be within their, more within their sort of remit of, of, of doing something um, as opposed to the systemic committee doing it. Um, so I think that, that that would be my suggestion to make it more effective. Okay. Um, would it be helpful for me to take the, the document that Dave put out and color code the things I mentioned and where, where there's commonality behind between things? And yes. then you all could take that and then from that you could maybe either color code or highlight or, you know, however you wanted to do it. Just send me back the document with, with, with either, your, you know, track changes comments or highlighting something that you feel like, yeah, I want, I want, I want this to be brought forward. Maybe that's the easiest way to do it. It's just taking the words on the page and, and just selecting what you feel like is most is, is super important. And then we can, I can take that out and I can create more like a bulleted list up from it. Would that would that would that work? I, I'm just trying that's to find a, the most. That's a great suggestion. Yeah, it was it was okay. a lot to try to plow through and 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 make sense of you know what things you read above that aligned with things down below. So yeah, that, that's a great suggestion. Okay, I can do that. Um. The other thing I wanted to think about too is that so that the you know the, the needs assessment gap analysis whatever you choose as your short list of, and I would I would suggest doing like. I would suggest you know even doing selecting ten or fifteen things out of this whole gap analysis and then ranking them and saying here are the top five, here are the lo the more longer term five, here are the ones that are going to need su substantial um, assistance and backup to be able to achieve, um, whether that's you know, municipal coordination or outside money or whatever. So put it, put them in three different categories. That way you've got sort of like a, you know, short term, medium term, long term sort of thing. Um, and then I was going to encourage Dave to present this to the planning board as well and have them focus on the planning section um, and looking at, you know, what their goals are over the next five years and whether there's anything on the list that they feel like they would like to um, spearhead and maybe take, take the lead on. And similarly with conservation, the same thing, maybe having Kristen Murphy take this document and having them just look at the conservation recommendations and maybe mm -hmm. also the adaptation and resilience ones too. Maybe the planning board and conservation could do both of those um, and do the same exercise. Like, is there anything in your work plan or, or that you've discussed that you are interested in doing or, or that you already do that you might be able to tweak a little bit to, um, to you know, to meet the goals of this assessment. Um, that way, you, you you know, it's a way of bringing in more partners um, into the into the, into the mix, so that we'll be able to maybe make for progress on more than just what this committee um, can do on its own. Um, 
Does that make sense? Or is that something that you would, would advocate for? I think that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. And Dave, as, as, as a town staff person, can they, I'm sure they have staff meetings and they have you know um, planning meetings internally. Maybe he could take the municipal operations and policy stuff forward a little bit a little bit further and maybe ask some of the facilities managers and others, you know, department heads, if um, if they'd be willing to also put some of these things in their work plans. So maybe we could cover almost all of these um, all of these bases in some way, shape, or form through the this committee and, and others who work to represent the community and actually, you know, our boots on the ground kind of committees. And also the Heritage Committee, I think, would be probably good to, um, to bring in. Um, we'll probably have some really good ideas about, you know, the, the downtown area, the, the entire community. Um, so I guess my work is to go back to the document, the compiled document do some color coding, some organizational stuff. I'll put together the bulleted list of the, of, the, of the sort of the big ticket items that I saw that there was a lot of consensus around and send that out to you probably next week or maybe I could get it back to you by Friday. Um, and you all can send back some, some feedback uh, as to, to move forward. And just thinking again, just letting you remember that, you know, if you, if you, pick, if you pick like three to five of the items, you know, to be priority, you know, short term items, we can start to develop work plans around them. And they won't be, they won't be actually so much implementation plans, because that's going to take some time. But work plans are more like, you know, what's, the, what's the problem? What are the needs here? You know, how does the process work? Um, who do we need to talk to? It's sort of like giving getting yourself organized to take this thing and take it forward. And some implementation might happen around it, especially if, if you chose one that was community-based and outreach. We definitely can work with communications committee or if it's event-based or something like that to um, to start working on a, a you know a plan behind it. So an implementation plan. Julie, my understanding is that you wanted us to select three to five of short, long, and medium, or short, medium, long term. Um, could you color code by which ones would be short, long, and medium? Because I don't know which um, would be short, long, and medium term goals. So could you like let us know, pick five from this bucket, five from this bucket, and five from this bucket? Because I, with town planning, I don't know um, what would be short and long term and such. Okay. So do you want me to do that to the actual needs assessment gap analysis to each one of the, the things that are listed there? Because there is a column for that. You want me There's to take a, that? That would be great. Yeah, I, I did just, I, I personally don't know what is a long-term plan or what can be done on a short term within a town. So I would okay. rely on your expertise to put them into the categories and then we can help rank them. Is that? Sure. Is there any mileage in sharing that document with or getting Dave to share it with other department heads and seeing, you know, um, what, you know, what, 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 what they're doing already um, so that they, you know, they can say, okay, well, we're doing this already. So, you know, this is where we are or this is where, you know, this is how long we are looking at this you know, um, uh, this project or whatever happening, you know, this is what we're doing in terms of sustainability so that, so that then we, we're, we are in a better position to say, okay, um, say for example, DPW or whatever, you know, are doing something to do with recycling or, or increasing recycling and composting then, and then how can we as a committee help them get there a bit quicker or, you know, or pro give them resources or suggest other ways of doing that. Um, so I just wonder, because I, I think one of my comments was that um, there is a lot of um, information in that document where I would see, you know, needs collaboration, you know, with different departments. And also, to me, a lot of the items would be already on their work plan for something that they would be doing or they they should be doing or you know or they're thinking about doing 
um, you know, we don't know, we don't know that. Right, and that's why I wanted them to take, Dave to take this needs assessment, and he, he and myself, maybe he can do the planning board, maybe I could do conservation with Kristen. But the needs assessment gap analysis document actually has, has, un, it has un, incomplete, incomplete columns, you know, for each one of the, the recommended actions. So the first column is short, medium, medium and long-term actions, um, action which Kristen mentioned, filling that out. Um, funding needed to actually accomplish it, whether it's local funding or outside funding, partners, whether outside partners or and you know internal community partners, municipal partners, and then the last one which says outcomes. But I think I'm going to change the column heading to current status and outcomes. Um, so we, as you mentioned, Chetna, that each one of the departments could make make a comment. You know, yes, we're already doing this, but we could enhance it. Or yes, it's in our work plan, but it's you know it's in year five or something like that. So that you would have a status for each one. Yeah, you've um, also got the energy committee, you know, with yep. uh, with you know, with their um, plan for putting um, charging stations and so on. So I just you know, I just think that we were talking earlier before the meeting started, uh, was that you know sustainability is such a broad, uh, all encompassing um, subject matter that at the end that you know, and it covers a lot of departments, as Nico said, you know, are maybe already doing a lot of the lot of the things that we're, we're discussing, but we don't necessarily know. And it's it's that's where uh, the communication and the raising awareness comes in is where where we could then say, okay, well, you know, this department is doing this, you know, towards their sustainable goal, the sustainability goal, you know, and and keep that information flow going so that people people don't get despondent and say, oh, well, you know, nothing's really happening. Mm -hmm. um, okay. and, I think and, and I think too, Madam Chair, I, I agree with you. I think that's right. And I, you know, earlier this year when Dave started assuming, um, you know, this additional role, I think, you know, the committee was surprised to see some of the things that we didn't know that Dave was already doing. And I know that particularly with public works and water, um, you know, perhaps even with, with fire and public safety, there are going to be departments who are already doing um, or performing sustainable initiatives that are in our goals that we don't know that they're doing. So I think that's a, that is a next a good next step. Okay. So, but in the meantime, do you still want to do the prioritization and come up with your you know your your top picks and stuff out of the list as for this committee to like spearhead and work on? Yeah, so I think. I think ultimately I still see the committee as being, um, you know, the, the, the front front end of, of um, <clears throat> raising awareness on sustainability uh, throughout, you know, throughout the town and towards, and, and for residents as well, you know, and, I, and, I, and it comes back to, to this, which I strongly believe in, in, in terms of empowering um, individuals and residents to, to do their bit for sustainability and to, you know to you know simple example we've, we've talked about before you know increasing composting throughout the town you know amongst the businesses and so on and so forth and, it, and it's and it's keeping that uh, conversation and what can you do what can we do uh, you know question you know rearing you know people keep asking that question um, and then, and then we, as a resource, can provide information on on how people can make a difference. Um, so that's okay. I think I think even just picking two or three things that you want to work on in the next year or two, like you know, if you wanted to jump on the composting thing and get a composting initiative going, and you know, I think we had talked about this long time ago um, about you know there are lots of options for composting besides having you know a pickup. You could do like, you know, neighborhood composting sites or, you know, or have several composting sites around the town where you could actually bring things. Uh, I was just talking with one of my neighbors, as a matter of fact, today, I was bringing my compost bucket in and um, with two big zucchini from my garden. I can't believe it. I just picked two zucchini from my garden today. Um, but I, in the, I, I bring my compost to my community garden plot and that's where I compost. And she's like, oh, we don't, she wants to do it here in our condo, our complex here. Um, but not sure if, if she can, if, if they'll take a cur curbside from, from a large group like this. So 
So we're going to try and solve that on, on our own here. So it's a great conversation to have, and there are lots of challenges that you know that people face in, in trying to do composting. So um, if you wanted to just take that as your pet project and run with it, um, you know, one or two things, that would be fine. That's perfectly legitimate. And I would strongly encourage you to invite Public Works in, particularly Jennifer Perry and or Jay Perkins, um, yep. because I think they would be two very valuable resources that we have in town that could help us take the next step. Yeah, and that's, that's where, you know, the, the collaboration comes in and also, you know, putting the document um, that's been produced in front of in front of them and in front of the other departments and seeing what they're doing and how they feel about you know what has been uh, put into that document and what comments you know they they can make and, and what is what they're doing within their department. Yep. Okay. So um, so I'm getting the kind of a I saw a pretty firm message that you like. Um, Dave and I to shop this around basically yeah. and get it out there in front of people, municipal department heads, other municipal staff, to all the boards and commissions and get their feedback and try and get them to um, take some ownership and where they already are taking ownership of certain actions and maybe where they, you know, hope to based on their own, you know, own work plans that they've developed. So I think that's sort of a good place to start. So it may take us a couple months to accomplish that, just to try to get on people's agendas and stuff. So um, that sounds great. I also would like to get a meeting together with you, do Christopher, maybe a conference call or something to just talk about where the communications committee is um, on things because part of part of this grant actually is, is to is to actually do some communications work around sustainability. So um, I'd like to try and brainstorm with you to come up with a plan for, for me and for that dovetails with what your committee um, is is hoping to do. Right. Okay, anyone else got any more, any other comments with regards to the document? Are you speaking to um, I just had a quick question about the, um, did we create a communication subcommittee yet? No. Oh, I thought you did. <laughs> okay. No, I was just reviewing the minutes. I think we talked about it two months ago and we didn't actually, uh, I was actually going back through the uh, May minutes right while we were talking. And I don't think we, I think we talked about it, but we didn't create it. I'd, I'd push Nina. Nina. I would push well, Nina. I was going to say, with Nina being on the communications <laughs> committee for the town, she's an obvious choice to be on that subcommittee here. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Everybody else just took a giant step. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, that was I'm happy to happy to participate. Just want, didn't know if I, if I missed it. No, I love to I love to join you on there if that's possible. <laughs> okay, great. Maybe we can get together. And I just uh, had one. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Um, I was just going to make a, a quick comment about um, the putting the plan in place and you, you stating that, you know, realistically, it would take about two months for um, different groups to respond. In the meantime, should we still create that short list of, of importance um, from our from our group? I think that would be helpful um, because it is a huge list, um, you know, it takes a while to go through and um, but at least if we have sort of a focus from our end, well, you know, rather than just waiting, um, we can hopefully continue to move forward and to make some progress quicker. Yeah, and I'll, I'll get that color-coded version of the compiled list together, uh, our comments list together for you, and um, at the latest by Monday, but I'll try and, I'll try and do it for Friday. Um, that way you can start working on it as a group and just send, send the comments back to me and Dave and I'll, I'll work on getting that together. And like I said, I'll, it'll, it'll include a, in the email um, transmission a, a bulleted list of the things that there was consensus around already and they'll be highlighted in, the, in mm -hmm. the actual. And Nina, I think that'd be a, okay, a, really, a really strong play. I think if we can actually do the hard work and, and, and whatever subcommittee gets pulled together for this and, and as a committee come out with, I mean, 
let's just be honest, three or four or five really strong things that we think are the focus for now. I'm not saying we won't do the other things. At the same time, in parallel, uh, working mm. with, uh, with Julie and, and Nico to shop this around town a little bit, I think, and just be open and clear with the communication that uh, not only are there things that the committee thinks that they're going to you know, push through right now, but we're also we're trying to work across the town to see what other things are already in play and which, you know, and just be, be open with the communication about it and let people know that there are things we're, we're focused on. So that's great. Mm -hmm. okay. I think other, the other thing too, um, now that businesses are starting to open up and things may start opening up in the community is to maybe talk with groups like the Downtown Business Association. You know, a lot of, I know a lot of businesses and especially restaurants are going towards compostable materials and takeout containers and things like that. So, um, you know, that's a, that's a huge win for, you know, for the community if, if that could be promoted as a, you know, sustainable option, you know, alternative and option. Just, just mm -hmm. a, an idea for a communications effort. Great. Well, thank you for your time. And I, um, um, you know, where to find me by email if you have any questions in the meantime. And I, I think I'll talk with Dave when he gets back on from vacation next week and see if we can start setting up some meetings with the boards and committees and um, other, you know, department heads and staff people and start getting their input on the, on the needs assessment. That's my, that's where I'm headed. <laughs>
Scott Vogel. B O G L E. Thank you. I can report from the front lines of the bicycle industry that uh, any low or mid price bicycle anywhere in the United States, used or new, is sold out. You cannot get it. Yes. Uh, and obviously, it's um, it's it's more prominent in in larger towns and cities that have uh, have had a, a strong public transportation plan. But people don't just don't even want to get back on a train, get back on a bus. And it's been a, it's been a great opportunity. And responsible cities are dedicating more and more uh, car lanes to bike and ped lanes and things like that, even in an ad hoc way. And it would be nice to find a way, even in our small community, to uh, to capitalize on the momentum uh, and. Even though there will be some recession from it at some point, I think that we can make some gains that way as well uh, and, and take advantage of, of the situation. So, yeah, he's a cycling enthusiast himself. He, he actually rides his bike from where he lives in Durham. He rides his bike to work um, quite a bit. In the his, his name park. sounds very familiar. I'm sure he's on some Strava, uh, some Strava lists that I've seen. Somewhere. Oh, I'm sure he is. Yeah. He's part of the East Coast Greenway Alliance. He's, um, he used to work for. Um, I work with um, Saber, Saber out of Forsmer, sure, the Seacoast yep. area bike something right, um, group, and um, he's heading up the Greenway effort here in New Hampshire. So Great. he's a good guy. He he has a lot of good ideas. Great. Thank you, Julie. Great. Well, I'm gonna take my dog for a walk before it gets dark out. <laughs> Bye, Julie. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty, I'll, I'll be in touch then in a, in a couple of days with um, the revised uh, documents so you can start working on stuff. And I will keep you posted um, if we start um, setting up meetings, we'll give you an update like every couple of weeks about who we're meeting with and what meetings we have on, on, on the books. Okay? Thank you. You bet. Take care. Thanks. Bye. See ya. So, um, let me see how. I had a, a request or a, a question from a resident who, uh, and I'm, it's a shame that Dave isn't here, um, with regards to the development, the proposed development development on Epping Road, Continental Drive. I don't know if Nico can shed some light on this for me um, about the proposal for 224 housing unit um, associate, with associated retail and the Y daycare and a possible restaurant development. Um, so I was asked whether there's, you know, obviously there's uh, waivers for wet from the wetlands um, to be made into parking lots um, and whether there's encouragement for that development to have solar panels and look at other sustainable um, charging practices. posts. Sorry? Solar panels and charging posts for electric vehicles. Yes. Yeah. So um, I don't know uh, where that's landed. Uh, I don't know, Nico, do you know? Sure. Um, yeah, that project actually came before the planning board when I was still the select board rep to the board. And um, since we turned over in March, Molly Cowan is now the planning board um, rep. But um, uh, the last update I have is they are still hearing um, about the project. Um, I believe it was either the last planning board or the one before that. Um, they haven't deliberated yet. They're still, you know, hearing about the project. So it's still in the initial stages of the planning board. Uh, but I would encourage folks to go on the, um, the Exeter website and look at the planning board agenda. Um, because certainly that will be discussed in the very near future again. So short answer is nothing's been decided. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, because I think the question was that obviously the even though the proposal was um, in early late October last year, um, there's been little public attention with regards to the development. Oh, it's um, come before the planning board. I mean, it came before the board. Once when I, I it, it's come before the planning board at least twice, if not three times, since the the end of last year. Okay. Right. Or maybe we can uh, look at that and see what the whether there is potential for having a more of a sustainable building. Is this the one called the Gateway Project? I don't know what it's called. The one on Epping Road. It's the one on Epping Road. 
Continental Drive at the back of Continental Drive. Yeah, that and that backs up against a Little River Conservation Area. Yeah. 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 There's wetlands. Um, look into that. Okay, yeah, um, the Conservation Commission spent um, many hours <laughs> discussing this um, last month. Um, and I, I think they're, they're still doing reviews of the wetland because there was, I think they discovered some like vernal pools back there that yeah. were initially and, reported. And at the last planning board meeting, I believe uh, one of the next steps was to have an independent study done to address okay. the vernal pool and there, was, and there was one other um issue that came out relative to that so so it's being thoroughly discussed by other boards that i can tell you <laughs> it was my first meeting and guys it went for like over three hours i was not expecting this <laughs> well good though that's good. No, I'll have to look more into that. And so, uh, uh, Nico, you said uh, uh, planning, look at the planning agenda, planning board agenda next? Yeah the, yeah, the planning board meets every second and fourth Thursday of the month, and the agendas are always posted prior to that, uh, as well as all of the, um, the packet documents. So okay. uh, they've been, they have been meeting, you know, typically, the, you know, they would have met in the Novak room. Uh, public is always welcome. And, um, and I know public input is always welcome. They have been successfully meeting via Zoom since April. I've watched all but one of the meetings because um, a lot of these cases I you know, started hearing last year. So obviously I still have an interest being resident as well. But um, abutters and members of the public have been able to speak um, with ease. So I, I would I would encourage people to uh, to go on and, and listen. What happened? Do we have any other business? Oh. Madam Chair, may I say, I don't know if you're ready to adjourn, but before you adjourn, may I mm -hmm. say something? Um, yes. Couple things. I, I'm just, I'm so excited with the direction that the committee has been going in um, in the last couple months and certainly hearing what Dave and Julie have been working on and the fact that you're all um, starting to look at subcommittees to get a lot of the work done in between meetings. And, and that's just very exciting for me. Um, there's two vacant seats though. And to expect the five of you to do all this work, uh, it's, it's a lot. So the select board is waiting for applications. There are two open seats for the sustainability committee and we would love to fill those seats so that we can get two more folks in to help you do this important work. So I'm saying that publicly. Um, and hopefully, if any of you know of anybody you want to recruit, um, you know the application process. The application is on the town website. Uh, just complete it and send it to the town manager's office, and the select board will set you up for an interview. So, well, I think I think uh, Nina, if you could utilize our Facebook page to put that word out, uh, we can put it on. Uh, we can share it on the Seacoast Goes Green page as well because there's a lot of followers on that. And maybe we can put it on the town Facebook page. The town Facebook page that 5,200 <laughs> people follow, exactly. Yes, so I think, um, can I leave that with you, Nina, to have a look and see whether we can do that? Or Chris? Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely add it to our, our page, that's no problem. Um, as far as the, uh, the town page, I guess I'll just, send that over to dave right but yep send it over to dave and uh and uh, i've already hit him up again since as soon as he gets back from vacation okay. that uh, he should be looking to meet with you and i so yeah okay so, so remember good. everybody you know any applicant has to be a town of town of exeter resident and um right. i spoke with uh madam chair before the meeting started uh our next select board meeting is monday night july 13th and we're going to be inviting dave to give a an update on um the sustainability committee and some of the initiatives he's working on. So my pledge to you is I will also broadcast uh, the need for two applicants at that meeting as well. Perfect. Thank you, Madam Chair. Nico, 
think we were thinking on the same lines because that's how I was going to end. That we still need <laughs> two people to apply. We need people to apply for two two spots. Okay. Um, all right. Any other any other business comments before we adjourn? No. I have one uh, thought. Yes, Bev. <laughs> um, has any has the idea of starting to acquire electric school buses come into the picture at all? Are they affordable so that it is a practical way to move? Well, that would be an SAU sixteen. Um, the the yeah. schools and the school buses are really not um, in the town purview, but certainly that's something that could be brought up. I'm sure with SAU 16 and the school board. The town must have some say since the, you know, the, so many of the, the schools are in the town. Yeah, no, it falls so, under the SAU 16 purview. I know that, I, I know that. But it seems to me that, and Riverwoods needs to move forward with electric buses too. So, you know, anything that can make that more affordable, more more attractive <laughs> is good. Okay. All right, so it's um, 7.57, um, adjourn the meeting. Anyone want a motion to adjourn? I'll second it. I'll second it. <laughs> all right, that's all we're here for. All right, uh, next meeting is uh, so hard Tuesday. On next meeting is Tuesday, the 4th of August um, at 7 o'clock. And um, venue, we could be on Zoom still. Um, so uh, we'll see what happens. Whether, whether we do get back into the town, I have no idea. But. But we keep striding forward and keep working through. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thank Good to see everybody. Thank Good night. Good to see everybody. Good to yeah. see everybody. Good night. Good night. Stay safe. Good night. Bye-bye.